So episode 3 of The Acolyte turned out to be just as divisive as many predicted. Whether you enjoyed the episode or not is your business, and you're entitled to it. I'm enjoying some aspects of this show, and there are others that I can do without. I know I'm in the minority here, but I like the concept of the Force which is of Brendok. Playing Star Wars Galaxies, I developed a fondness for the Force which is of Dathomir. The idea of powerful Force-sensitive factions other than the Jedi and Sith is exciting and welcome. The Night Sisters and the Singing Mountain Clan view and commune with the Force differently. They don't see the Force as light and dark. There's no separation between the Living Force and the Cosmic Force. To them, the Force is a manifestation of the Twin Deities, the Winged Goddess and the Fanged God. Their core truth is that the Spirit Plane is parallel to ours and inhabited by the essences of animals, nature's forces, and the ancestors, yet it is ruled by the manifestations of female and male energies. The spirits bestow fertility upon the tribes. They also believe that all magics throughout the galaxy are derived from the daughters of Alia and can be traced back to the life web of Dathomir, meaning the force witches of Brendok could have potentially originated on Dathomir. When Mother Anisea describes the force as a thread, it further confirms this theory for me because what is a web if not a connection of threads? Now, the controversy in this episode concerns the language used to discuss the conception of the twins, Osha and May. Choosing to use the same dialogue from The Phantom Menace when Qui-Gon asked Shmi about Anakin's paternity caused some viewers to draw the same conclusion, whether intentional or unintentional on the part of the writers. I don't believe that was the message being portrayed here, but I certainly understand why others do. Qui-Gon needed to request the paternity of Anakin because clearly Shmi is not force sensitive, but the force witches are, so leading with the question about the twins' paternity felt contrived and unnatural. That said, the nature of Anakin's conception still remains unique. Whether your source is the Vader comic or the Darth Plagueis novel, Anakin was conceived by the force itself as a means of balance. Here's an excerpt from the Plagueis novel that explains how Plagueis and Sidious created a shift in the force to favor the dark side. The question of whether he and Sidious had discovered something new or rediscovered something ancient was beside the point. All that mattered was that almost a decade earlier, they had succeeded in willing the Force to shift and tip irrevocably to the dark side. Not a mere paradigm shift, but a tangible alteration that could be felt by anyone strong in the Force, and whether or not trained in the Sith or Jedi arts. The shift had been the outcome of months of intense meditation during which Plagueis and Sidious had sought to challenge the Force for sovereignty and suffuse the galaxy with the power of the dark side. Brazen and shameless, and at their own mortal peril, they had waged etheric war, anticipating that their own midichlorians, the Force's proxy army, might marshal to boil their blood or stop the beating of their hearts. Risen out of themselves, discorporate and as a single entity, they had brought the power of their will to bear, asserting their sovereignty over the Force. No counterforce had been risen against them. In what amounted to a state of rapture, they knew that the Force had yielded, as if some deity had been tipped from its throne. On the fulcrum they had fashioned, the light side had dipped, and the dark side had ascended. This next passage, also from the Plagueis novel, confirms that neither Plagueis nor Sidious created Anakin. Drunk on newfound power, then, he had attempted an even more unthinkable act, to bring into being a creation of his own, not merely the impregnation of some hapless mindless creature, but the birth of a forceful being. The ability to dominate death had been a step in the right direction, but it wasn't equivalent to pure creation. And so he had stretched out, indeed, as if invisible, transubstantiated to inform every being of his existence and impact all of them, munoid or insectoid, secure or dispossessed, free or enslaved, a warrior waving a banner in triumph on a battlefield, a ghost infiltrating a dream, but ultimately to no end. The force grew silent as if in flight from him, and many of the animals in his laboratory succumbed to horrifying diseases. Now, the writer of the comic also confirmed that it was not his intention to portray Sidious as Anakin's creator. However, Plagueis did indeed achieve Force Conception. Here is another passage from the novel to confirm that. 
Deeper in the complex, they moved past cages containing as many creatures as could be found in a well-stocked zoo. 114D indicated a cluster separate from the rest. These are the Magister's most recent pregnancies. The Magister's, Sidious repeated in bewilderment. His success rate has improved. Sidious was still trying to make sense of the droid's statement when they entered a long corridor lined with windowless cells. Through the force, he could sense life forms behind each locked door. Captives? Oh no, sir, 114D said. Ongoing experiments. What did the droid mean when it said the Magister's pregnancies? Beneath the breath mask, Plagueis might have quirked a smile. It means that the pregnancies were not achieved by normal means of conception, but rather through the Force. Surprise and disbelief mingled in Sidious's blue eyes. The Force? Yes, Plagueis said pensively, but I fail to excise due caution. As we attempt to wrest the powers of life and death from the Force, as we seek to tip the balance, the Force resists our efforts. Action and reaction, Sidious. Something akin to the laws of thermodynamics. I have been audacious, and the Force has tested me the way Tenebris sought to. Midichlorians are not easily persuaded to execute the dictates of one newly initiated in the Mysteries. The Force needs to be won over, especially in work that involves the dark side. It might be reassured that a Sith is capable of accepting authority, otherwise it will thwart one's intentions. It will engineer misfortune. It will strike back. Force witches deal entirely in Force sorcery, which is only considered a discipline for the Sith and one that they can't all even excel in. Darth Bane, for example. The Force conception Plagueis was trying to achieve was practiced through Sith sorcery. To think it inconceivable that a Force witch dealing only in Force sorcery could achieve this feat is short-sighted at best. The unique conception of Anakin Skywalker remains intact. Ultimately, we've yet to hear the truth of it all, and it may wind up being ridiculous, but I would just love to get back to having nerdy debates rather than all this goddamn hate. But you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments, subscribe and follow for more Star Wars content.